Good evening, everyone. I welcome you all to this webinar that we wanted to share with you, and it's called uh, The Viking Age, the Scandinavian Influence on English Language and Identity. So I thank the British Book Center in St. Petersburg for giving me this opportunity to speak about this beautiful topic. And um, I see that we have 17 participants now. Maybe some will join us later. And, um, but uh, since our meetings are limited to 40 minutes, we shall start without um, waiting. Maybe I'll just wait a few more minutes. It's one minute more. So let me explain how we will go about this webinar. Firstly, we shall, I will present to you the topic. I will present to you how the Scandinavians influenced English language and identity. And maybe I'll do that for 25 to 30 minutes. And after that, we will have an interactive round where you can ask me your questions. You can uh, say something that you want to about this presentation. So, all right. So before, much further ado, let's start the presentation. So, today, um, today we are talking about the Viking Age. Now, the Vikings invaded England around the 700 to 800 AD, and uh, within that re uh, within that uh, time frame, they uh, they did a lot of things. They actually um, started from raids, from raids of the English coasts, and later on they moved on to even settlements in the British Isles. So, um, who were the Vikings? Who exactly were the Vikings? Now, whenever we talk about the Vikings, we have this picture of people, ruthless people, wearing horned helmets and carrying battle axes. But were they only that? Were they just warriors? Did they not have a culture? So such questions arise in our minds when we talk about the Vikings, because in the pages of history, they have been portrayed mostly as um, ravaging men and women who used to come and pillage and loot and destroy settlements of other civilizations. But were they only about pillaging and destroying civilizations? Did they give something back in return? Were they kind people? Were they um, useful people for the people they you know, influenced? Were they useful to the culture of the places they invaded? So we shall uh, look into that. So the Vikings originated in what is now Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. All those centuries before they became unified countries. Now, you can see these three countries right now, they're about um, of Scandinavia. We call them Scandinavia in total as a whole. And, uh, but during the rural times, they were not unified. They usually fought amongst each other. And uh, there were no major settlements in these regions. There were no towns. There, the vast majority earned a meager living through agriculture and also fishing. So their main source of livelihood, as you may call it, were fishing and agriculture. The Vikings in Britain, let's get to the point where they invaded Britain. So from around 860 AD, uh, they stayed and settled and prospered in Britain. And uh, the first person who gave them this right to stay there was Alfred the Great, the only king in England who was called the Great. So um, you might not know this, but maybe you do. So the names of our weekdays come from the names of Norse gods. Tuesday comes from Tyr or Thi. Wednesday comes from Odin or Woden, according to them. Thursday comes from Thor and so on. Many of the other words also have become part of the English language. For example, egg, steak, law, die, even bread, down, fog, muck, lump, crony. So as you can see, these are very, very common. Well, most of them are quite common English words. and um, their origins are from Old Norse, uh, something which we might not always consider. 
So here is a timeline of when the Vikings started and when they um, left uh, the, the English Isles and went further. So you might be you might be interested to know that Novgorod in Russia was founded by a Rus Viking Ulrich. So even King Rurik was half Viking anyway. And uh, this is an interesting fact. A lot of people don't know about the Rus Vikings who made Kiev in present-day Ukraine a part of their stronghold. And uh, well, the first attack of the Vikings began, uh, began in England in 789 AD in Lindisfarne, which is a monastery. It, it was a monastery and there were some very innocent monks who used to stay there and probably read the Bible, pray and perform monastery duties. But these people, Vikings, they landed on the coast out of nowhere and started to kill them all. Well, not all. They also took slaves. They're very famous for taking slaves. So after this happened, King Alfred decided to sign a pact with them called the Danelaw Pact, which provided them land in the northern part of England. And um, there's another Viking called Rollo who was granted land by the Franks, which is present day Normandy. It was basically a Viking settlement. And therefore, uh, right now, Normandy, or as you can see from the name, Norman, Northmen, maybe, uh, of course, the name has such an origin. And um, the Vikings also raided Istanbul. Which, which was Constantinople back in the days. And if we look at the history of Russia, they founded Novgorod. Let's move to the English language influence that they have made. So the Vikings immigrated to England, they changed the English language, and they were in the, their towns were in the Domesday Book. Now the Domesday Book is the piece of literature in England that talked about laws and uh, civil practices during that age in England. Viking immigration in England. So, as we have studied before, as we have read before, there is a book called the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, which describes their visit to Lindisfarne. Now, it describes it as, we're on the Ides of June. Now, Ides of June means the 15th or the 14th of June, the middle of June. Very old English, it's very uh, Shakespearean English, um, Victorian era. But, um, well, it describes them as hidden. Hidden means the straight, coming straight from hell. So it describes them as coming and destroying God's church and bringing ruin and slaughter. So they were a terrifying force in, back then to, you know, more civilized. I won't say more civilized, but uh, societies were, which had more, just as more uh, uh, civil code, civic code of living, they were they came up on as pagans because they worshipped the Norse gods and nobody liked them really. And uh, as you can read here, they also founded the cities of Dublin, Cork, and Limerick, and there were Viking strongholds. And soon, they captured York, modern York, right now, and they made it their capital. So, right now. A lot of, of um, people in England, and we don't know who is a Viking and who is not, because a lot of mixing happened later on, because we are in 2020, and that happened 1820, 1830, 1080, so like 1,300, 400 years ago. So their influence on the English language, something that I am very interested in talking about, some words, some um, very, very common words that um, you might not know have come from Old Norse. Old Norse was the language that they used to speak. Now, all the languages in Scandinavia are based on Old Norse. And all right, so because of the immigration from Scandinavia, the language of the newcomers that the newcomers spoke had a very big influence on the English language because they were everywhere. They were everywhere in England, they spread out. They used to use their own language. And of course, the English folks learned, maybe added their own terms 
into the English language. So the language that the Vikings spoke was called Old Norsic, and uh, it directly translated into English Old Norse or in, uh, in, into Old Nordic. And uh, England still has the Nordic word for town, which is B, B Y. For instance, helper B or helper by, I don't know the correct pronunciation, but I think it's B. Yorkshire. Um, in Northern Yorkshire, this very town, helper by, comes from, or helper B, comes from two Viking words, help. Um, in Old Norse, this J looking word is Ye. Yeah. So help and the Nordic word for town, which is B. So as you can see, it's, uh, most, uh, some towns in England still have these names that end with B. So um, B means a town in Old Norse. Maybe in present Nordic languages, they mean the same. Now we will look into some Old Norse words that became English words. Did you have any idea that all these words that you see on the screen right now came from Old Norse? Um, arm, bag, cake, child, lad, not, rot, scar, outlaw. You can see their Old Norse counterparts on the side, and this is not it. There you go. There's more. Sister, troll, trust, ugly, even ugly, Valkyrie, same, scar, guy, slaughter, stake, thick, guy. So as you can see, the Old Norse versions, Old Norse versions are pretty similar in terms of pronunciation and also spelling. Maybe there are some extra words which are very unique to extra letters, sorry, extra letters which are very unique to the Nordic languages. But as you can see, they're very similar. And this all happened because the Viking settled down in England and influenced the livelihoods, the culture, and all these elements influence some, some countries or some place language, some places language. So they influence the language in such a manner. Now, according to some research done by Sandra from University of Iceland, now Iceland is another place which the Vikings founded. And um, according to her, it is estimated that there are around 400 Old Norse borrowing in standard English, and maybe in Old English there were even more. But in standard English, there have been around 400. And as you can see, the words are pretty common. Like you use these words probably in a regular basis if you speak English. Egg, of course, if you eat egg every day, use the word egg. And of, of course, the other words like lad. Well, we don't use lad that much unless we are in England. Lad means a man. Uh, it's like a colloquial way of referring to a young man. Hey, lad, how are you doing? So. Um, well, I have prepared a small dictionary of English to Old Norse, Old Norse to English words, just to highlight the similarities between these two languages and uh, some compilation of Viking music and other interesting materials. So since we have limited time, um, I would like, maybe if you want this, maybe if you need this, you can just contact me on any of the social media platforms. I will be very happy to share this resource or these resources with you if it benefits you in any manner. So with this, I come to the end of this presentation because if I start presenting all the 400 words, it's going to be endless. Well, not really endless, but it will take a little bit of time, which is not within the time frame that we have here. Anyway, I would like to thank you for your attention. And we, the British Book Center, me, we hope that you had a good time learning about how the Vikings came to England and how, you know, they're not just the uh, warriors with axes and, you know, horned helmets. There is a different identity to them. They, they also were humans and they had a language. And it's not that they just raided all their lives. They did it until they found a settlement. And once they did, they, they merged in with other people, with other cultures. Uh, they came to Russia, they came to Kiev and became the Kievan Vikings. They went to England. And right now, England, Ireland, Ireland was discovered by the Vikings. So 
you have to understand they did this for a reason, even though their um, ways of doing it were not right, because they were very, very savage. That is very true. Uh, the Old Norse gods were very savage as well, so it comes from their religion, maybe. And um, But let's look at them in a different light, as we did today, that they contributed a lot to the English language, identity, and culture. So thank you. And now, uh, with the remaining time that we have, you can ask me questions. You can um, discuss something you want to. I would love to hear your opinion about the Vikings. What do you think? So whoever wants to speak, you can just unmute and talk, please. Well, actually, I have a question. Of course. Uh, you said that uh, um, the names of uh, days of the week came mm -hmm. from uh, names of uh, gods. Yes. Uh, actually, I'm not good at mythology. Does it mean that uh, um, the god um, whose name was used for, for example, Monday is uh, more um, influent, um, is more important than other? So, like, well, any, um, right? very interesting question, uh, Trina. Very interesting question, and well, I am equally not well versed in mythology but i can say i can say one thing i can say i can tell you one thing that is um sunday comes after sun monday comes after the moon well if we if you talk about the english perspective now tuesday comes after tir which is our tig or um some norse god now they give the names to these days and there may have been many reasons well once i find some resources i'll be sure to send you but what I know is uh, Wednesdays from Odin, and Odin was kind of the head god in Norse mythology. Actually, the head god was All Father. Then came Odin, then was Thor, then Freya from Freya or Freyr came Friday. Saturday, I am not sure about Saturday. It's probably from the planet Saturn. And uh, there are many, many interpretations, you know. Throughout the lines of history, sometimes we, we don't really find out why, but we know how. So if I find out something, I'll be sure to share with you. But for now, maybe they just named it because to respect their God. Maybe they just named it because they wanted to worship that God on that day. Some reasons like this. Thank you. Thanks. Hello, Sutano. Hello. Hello, Sutano. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, but you have uh, only uh, told about words that came to English language from the Scandinavians. Uh, but uh, was there any influence on grammar or syntax from Scandinavian languages? Uh, grammar? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there was any influence in the grammar. But according to a book I read, which was researched by a friend in Iceland, um, there was, of course, there was some influence in the way people spoke or used the words. For example, um, in uh, let me go to the presentation and you can see the words arm, bag, cake, child. Now, some of, most of them are nouns, as you can see. There are some verbs, there are some adjectives. And, you know, in Old Nordic, they had a, a similar system of speaking like Cyrillic, like the Russian language. There were no prepositions, and uh, even if there were, they were very limited. Since it was a very old language, it was very conversational, and you know, it's very hard to understand how old Norse looked like because they used a very, very um, old form of uh, writing called the runes. If you have heard of it, the runes. Now, the runes are a very old form of writing, and it's very hard to understand what kind of grammar they followed. So, I'm not sure about. A major grammatical influence in the English language, but what I can tell you that a lot of their words are used as verbs, nouns, and adjectives, depending on what the English people decided to do with them. Um, I think there was a grammatical influence. The personal pronouns they are considered part of grammar, aren't they? Of course, you're right. Of course, so that's very true. Half very of English personal pronouns and this is very unusual because personal pronouns are like the most 
conservative and rigid part of any grammar. But English is unique in this way because they borrowed personal pronouns from a completely different language. Of course, I think that's kind of cool. Yes, that is very unique. That is very unique in terms of the English language. They borrowed a lot of things from main language, but you're right about personal pronouns because, yes, here we, we don't have, like, we just have me, you, and uh, you don't have anything, how to, like, any uh, rules of how to address a woman or a man because it's the same in English. So you're right. So There's, yes, it's the same. They and them and their, and the, mm -hmm. at some point, they used to have, like, you used to be thou, which is a cognate of the Russian T. And mm -hmm. it's just, I don't think, I don't, does anyone know of any other language that did that? Just chucked their own native pronouns and borrowed someone else's? Mm, I am not sure of any other language, but... Um, I think German has German pronouns. Mm -hmm. Like Russian has Russian pronouns. Mm -hmm. Yes. And French course. and Spanish. But English has someone else's pronouns. English is a very mixed language, as you can see, because right now it has become what you may call a universal language because um, every, everyone study, everyone knows some bit of it. If you're educated, you know a little bit of it because it's uh, um, most of the world's largest organizations like the United Nations or um, just for the sake of simplicity, maybe they use English because you don't have personal pronouns because using other languages might have a steeper learning curve, don't you think? Because of, uh, yes, yeah, so in that way, maybe English is uh, um, easier to follow and to write in technically, you know, technically or academically, maybe it's easier. So maybe it has that's a why. Bigger mm -hmm. coverage. Yes, yes, exactly. Usage. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's very true. Very interesting uh, thing that you said. and. Uh, it really got me thinking, yes. Anyone else? Uh, do you have any questions, anyone? We still have some time, so it would be great. If you have any questions, any requests, if you want, maybe you can share your email. I can send you the materials that I have. You can share it in the group chat if you want, or you can just private message them to me if you're not. Um, you know, that's, I have a follow-up question if no one else has any. Of course, uh, you can go on. I just I don't feel think bad about has. hogging the air. <laughs> what? I just it, maybe someone else has a question. I don't want to be the only one talking. Uh, uh, maybe uh, I hope so. <laughs> but yes, you have very interesting questions, and I do. I I really liked your question, and it got me thinking. Maybe I need to do more research on this field. But if there's anyone, yes, uh, we are nearing, almost nearing. We, we still have about seven minutes, I think. So that's kind of a lot of time, if you think. Not a lot, but well, if anyone has a question regarding the presentation, regarding anything else involved in the presentation, you can go ahead and discuss it. I have a question it. about yes, language. Um, do you happen to know if um, like Gaelic languages are related to Old Norse? Like, languages in uh, Wales and Scotland, but the, the native languages. Because mm -hmm. there are a lot of names of different places, but mm -hmm. Wales is Camry, Camry or something, and mm -hmm. a lot of names of places that do not sound Germanic or English or Latin. And mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering, are those languages related to Old Norse? Maybe yes. if Vikings go to Wales, or just England? They did. They did. Oh. They went everywhere. They actually, uh, as you have seen, the first place they went was Northern England because they came from some place called Kattegat. If you know what Kattegat, it's called Cat's Hole in, I think, Norwegian. Kattegat is a place uh, in between... Um, Sweden, Denmark, and Norway. So it's like a sea, it's area of sea. And uh, the Danes were on the other side of the ocean. And on, uh, if you want to refer to Northmen, like specifically Northmen, uh, in the earlier days, uh, 
Danes were not really considered like North North men. When you got to, when you talk about the Vikings, um, they were called the Vikings or the North men, not the Danes. Now, even though mm-hmm. King Alfred signed the Dane law because he considered them Danes because he didn't want to call them Vikings. So um, they spread everywhere. For example, let me tell you a short history. Uh, uh, I don't know if you have seen the series, a very interesting series that I recommend everyone to watch during the quarantine period. It's called The Vikings by the History Channel. It's a very good series. I almost finished watch- watching it, uh, like I think a month ago. And it talks about in like prime detail how this happened, how they moved to England, how they moved to the Mediterranean, how they even went to Africa. They went everywhere. They were fearless people. And the reason, the reason why they did this was because they had superior maritime skills. They had superior boats. You must have heard of the Viking longboat. The one in this picture, I'll show you. So this vessel, this vessel, it's a Viking longboat. Now, if you notice the construction of this boat, you can see that the wood is kind of placed on top of one another. It's not like bolted, it's not like you know, in in in, in England or in France during this time, during the uh, seven seven uh, hundreds or eight hundreds, they used to make uh, galleys. The boats were called galleys, and galleys were made with wood planks bolted together or even glued together. But these people, the Vikings, they made boats that can endure storms, major storms. As you know, that England that that area between England and Scandinavia is famous for its storms, even now. And in, back in those days, it was worse. So they were fearless and they traveled in the single sailed boats all the way to the Mediterranean during those times. So that's why they were everywhere. They even went to, um, as far as I know, they found Ireland and they went to conquer France. They went to conquer Paris. And well, that ends the Zoom. I guess seminar. Oh no, wait. Thank you for choosing Zoom. The meeting has no longer a time limit. Yes, well, I got that message too. That's fantastic. Well, this happened to me last time as well, and I was very happy. And well, it's good. So, exactly. So they went to Ireland, they found Ireland, they found Scotland, they found. Now, during those old times, you didn't have Scotland, you did not have. We had. East Anglia, you had Wessex, and you had Mercia. This three. East Anglia is Eastern England. Wessex is, as the name suggests, Western. And Mercia is probably somewhere around Northumbria. Or Northumbria is where the first attack, by the way. Lindisfarne, Northumbria. And uh, they went, as you, as you can see, they went everywhere. They went to Spain, which was back then, which was a Muslim stronghold, Saracens. The Saracens were in Spain during that time. But you know, they tried to make peace, they tried to settle down, but nobody allowed them to stay. That's the problem. And uh, once they got good land, once they got good land in England, England has very good land. Once they could see that the farming was going great, they settled down, they had no reason. Because you have to understand that they were farmers and they were fishermen. Why would they have a reason to kill people and create such a rocket in history. It's only because they did not have the right kind of land. Winters are extremely harsh in Norway. And back then it was worse because there was no climate change. So that's why they went where they went. Maybe not in the right way. Maybe not in in the right manner, but um, well, it's history anyway. So any questions? Yes, but uh, you have mentioned the series The Viking. How many episodes uh, are there? Mm, what, uh, can, can you repeat your question? Uh, that's How many question. episodes does the series The Viking have? Is it the long episodes? Oh, uh, the, long uh, episodes? the Vikings, yes. The Vikings, yeah, they're no, not that Vikings. long. Yes, the Vikings uh, series. Um, if you want to watch this, you can just go to the History Channel. I think they have it there for free. Maybe not. Maybe yes. And uh, there are six seasons until now, or seven. I think they haven't released the seventh season yet. 
there are six seasons and each season has 45 minutes long episodes which are yes 45 minutes long episode which are about like 10 or 12 per season so it's going to be a long one and i think season four and season five they have double the amount of episodes so if you have watched game of thrones you will find interest in this it's much like that but it's more real there's no magic stuff well there is magic stuff there is some old norse god magic happening some blood magic happening but you can understand that the history channel did this just for dramatic effect but as far as i know they tried to keep the facts straight it's a very historically accurate series very historically accurate even more than any other series that i have watched so the directors the um, script writers they paid very good attention to historical facts so you, you should give it a watch during this time that we have mm-hmm. Is it suitable for children or only for Um No, I think there is some, since, it's, since it displays the Vikings, there is some adult content. And uh, it's, since it also expresses historical facts, they did not hide some adult facts about the Vikings. So I'm afraid it's not suitable below 18 or maybe 16, yes. Okay, and uh, another question about the Vikings, mm-hmm. uh, their influence. Uh, how do you think um, uh, the sounds the and the did they come from the north? Uh, yes, yes, they came from the northmen. The and the yes, Thor, like Thor. Yeah, yeah, that is like okay. oh, we call we, we say Odin, but like Woden, the. So these words came from the not not old Norse language. You're right. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. All right. So. Um, anyone has any more questions? If not, maybe we can call it a day in case no one has any questions. Maybe some, any other sounds besides, besides the S? Um, yes, uh, they also had a rolling R, like the Russian. They also had, mm. like, yes, they also had this. And it, it, it influenced English accent in Scotland. So if you listen to someone from Scotland, uh, wary. They, they roll their R's. Uh, roll, uh, uh, so they do, they do that. And it could have come from the Vikings, but we are not sure. It could have come from them, yes. Because, you know, kind of, uh, it's very hard to understand because these things were not well written. Uh, people were kind of lazy back in the days. Well, when it comes to writing, I'm sorry, but this is true. They found no use to write things down. Only maybe charms, only maybe um, religious documents, and that's that's why when Christianity came to England, uh, the when the Holy Roman Empire was there, and uh, um, they enforced written material, they enforced calligraphy, they enforced writing scriptures, and that's where English writing starts basically. Before that, it's very hard to understand what happened because these were just pagan pagans, and um, they had a very esoteric or very difficult to understand rune, runic alphabet. Now you have different kinds of runes all over the world. But they also had runes. And if you look at the ship in the screen that I shared, and if you look at those shields, the shields in the ship, you, you'll notice some crosses or signs. Those were kind of a rune. Runic alphabet. Maybe you can look more on it. It's, very, it's a very, one of the most ancient forms of writing that existed. So anyway, um, Thank you, everyone. I hope I have been able to help you out in your quest to understand the English language and um, hope you enjoyed this. uh... All right, let me read the messages before we go up. So Anastasia Ivanova uh, and uh, Maria, uh, thank you very much for your questions about the music of the Vikings. Um, I have a compilation of their music and it's very scary. Some, some part of it is very scary. But uh, if you will email me, uh, just, so, just email me something, I'll be sure to send it to you. Like copy and send it. Just send me a mail here and um, I'll share with you all that I have regarding this topic. So you can learn from it. You can expand your knowledge about Viking music, culture, maybe Viking cuisine. I will also have some Viking recipes if you want to try well, the Vikings ate a lot of fish, mostly herring. That's a hint. 
anyway, thank you all for joining us today and uh, may you have a great evening and maybe we'll see you. I will see you all again in June if you're interested. I'm still looking for a topic, but I will let British Book Center know and maybe we'll have another one. Thank you very much. With this, I having an end to the session. Thank, thank you. you so much. So if you have any questions, thank you. If you have any more questions, don't uh, don't hesitate to mail me or uh, contact me on any social media platform if you prefer. Thank you so much. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Stay Goodbye. safe, everyone.